This is Tom from anti-proton.com. As some of you know, that there's tremendously more radiation high in the air than there is down at the ground. This is because radiation from space is blocked by the air. I recently took several airplane flights in which I used both of my two major Geiger counters, the ones I use the most. One has a very small LND712 tube, and the other has a very large pancake LND7317 tube. I decided to test them both at approximately 36,000 feet, not just to see what I would see, but to see how the two of them would behave. Unfortunately, because I had to take this video on an airplane, which is sort of difficult to do, not illegal, mind you, they, they have no problems with you doing it, but it's troublesome to do it when you're on an airplane. The video is a little crappy, and everything moves around, so I apologize for that, but I wanted you to take a peek. And yes, these are actually the readings you get high in an airplane. It's quite impressive. Let's take a look. Alrighty, we start out with the LND712 tube. It's a little tiny tube, a little bit bigger than a AA battery. And it's in the CRM100, which is kind of like a Rat Alert 100. A lot of small Geiger counters use this one. We have just cleared 10,000 feet, and I've just, been, I've just been told I can pull that out of my bag. I still keep it down so I don't alarm anyone, because even though it's okay to have one on a plane, people still freak out. And you notice we're getting like 60 and 70 counts per minute there at the beginning, not much. But once I hit about 30,000 feet, that changed. Take a look at these readings. 416 counts a minute, 359 counts a minute. The amounts of uh, radioactivity detected higher up in the air are quite impressive. We are at 35,499 feet, as you can see. In fact, it massively changed once we hit around 30,000 feet or so, massively. Now, they don't actually have any problem with you taking Geiger counters in airplanes. The TSA doesn't mind. You put it out in the little plastic buckets that go through the x-ray machine, and they look at it. And sometimes they ask you questions like, why the hell did you bring this? But generally speaking, they actually don't mind. The problem, though, is they have blinky lights and numbers that flash on them, so it's kind of important not to flash them around, even though they're legal. You don't, you don't want to, like, scare people or freak them out or anything, because we don't want them to ever become illegal. So if you ever take one, just... You know, don't, don't go nuts with it. You don't want to cause a, a fuss. It's nice that they let us take these on there right now. And uh, by the way, there's some gratuitous uh, airplane scenes. I'm sure why I added these, but regardless. Let's look back at the data again. You know, apparently we're going to drink coffee first, though. Okay. Well, anyway, getting back to the data, we are at 34,000 feet. Oh, that's right. We're starting our descent at this point with the CRM-100, and it's starting to go down, too. I could actually calculate my altitude to some degree just based on the readings. It was actually quite impressive, the change right around 30,000 feet. And we're beginning to slow down. Now we're going to switch to the uh, uh, larger pancake Geiger tube. So this one got about 400 counts a minute, plus or minus. All right, so I'm getting out my Inspector EXP Plus, which is an SE International product, and it has an LND7317. I've just recently taken off. This was shot over the course of many airplane flights, actually. I took four flights in the last couple of days. And as you can see, the readings are only a couple hundred counts per minute, but we're just barely over 10,000 feet. I'm having to hide this a bit because the people sitting next to me, I didn't want to spaz them out or freak them out, you know, because people spaz and freak way too easily. Wait till I get to altitude. It gets way higher. All right, now I'm at altitude. And you're about to see. Look at the flashy light in that sucker. The external probe is, is detached, of course, because it's, well, always detached. It's inside of my bag, but pointed up, you know, towards space. Let me pull this thing out where you can see it. It's actually pretty awesome. Uh, I have to get it out, though. I'm trying to be incognito so people don't freak out. 841 counts per minute. Look at that. 853. <laughs> yeah. For some weird reason, I switched it to Miller-Rankin's Prior, which is sort of useless. It's even more useless in the air than it is on the ground because it, it it varies too much with energy levels. I don't know why I switched it, but I guess I did it for giggles. That reading is basically totally inaccurate. Now let's look at the data. Alrighty. Looking at the uh, CRM100, as you can see, I did 18 minutes of counts, but on the 16th minute, 
which I noted, the cable actually popped out, which killed the last two minutes because the averages are all wrong. So only look to the 16th minute or so, okay? And as you notice, my average was starting to settle down to about 351 counts per minute. I was on short flights, so it was hard to get long-term runs off of this stuff. But we're looking at 350 counts per minute. Now, I've seen higher on the CRM 100, but I wasn't very high. I was in regional jets. And I was, according to me, the actual um, uh, airplane monitor, I was at 37,282 feet. And I would average to probably 36,000 if you count the ups and the downs. And this is somewhere over Georgia where I actually got these readings. But um, quite impressive, actually. Quite impressive. Now let's look at the uh, 7317, the um, uh, uh, pancake tube. Let's see what it did. Okay. Now, as you can see, the um, LND7317 pancake tube that's on my uh, SC International Inspector EXP Plus did massively higher readings. Well, not massively, like double to nearly triple, which isn't massive, I guess, if you really want to think about it. Besides massive isn't really a scientific word to use anyway, but whatever. So uh, I got, in this case, 32 minutes of readings, and these were all clean readings all the way down. And as you can see, it did pretty well. The highest count that I got looks to be 1,152 counts per minute. My average at the very end was 963 counts per minute. So keep in mind, this was a higher altitude flight right here that I took. This is more indicative of uh, what you'd get flying across the United States, for example. Now this little tube doesn't catch much of it. The reality is your actual dose uh, that you'd pick up would probably be well, it's hard to, to, to factor, uh, but it would probably be a couple millirems per flight. I've read this from uh, some uh, uh, official sources somewhere like Berkeley and places like that. Some of them have posted this kind of thing. It's kind of hard to figure it from a Geiger counter because Geiger counters miss so much at high altitudes because you have so many more energetic particles that go right through them. And for that matter, spectrometers don't catch very much at this altitude either. You need more specialized equipment than what I had. But it's still quite impressive to think of uh, the awesome dose you get up high. And let me make an important note. These higher readings have nothing to do with Fukushima. Yes, Fukushima happened. Yes, radiation went everywhere. Yes, I've detected it. These have nothing to do with it. Just to make sure everybody uh, uh, knows that before I start hearing the whole jet stream argument about the altitudes and so on. It's been like this since before Fukushima. But anyway. All right. So there you go. Need a keynote. But this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and um, have fun in the friendly blue skies.